Welcome into week 18, everybody. The final week of the regular season. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. I'm Lisa Kearney here in our Los Angeles studio. Hey, guys, we're going to do a show today. We are going to talk about football. There's a full slate of games, many that have huge playoff implications. We're going to get to our game breakdowns in just a moment. But first, the only way to start this show is by sharing love and support for Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin, who is fighting for his life after suffering cardiac arrest on Monday Night Football. The reality of this week, it's heartache, it's uncertainty after this tragedy in Cincinnati. But what we have learned about this amazing community is that our shared humanity and care for one another in the lowest moments is beautiful. And we can take that with us as we move forward. All of us here at FanDuel are sending continued thoughts and prayers to DeMar and his family. We will continue to bring you what we know as this new week kicks off with games on Saturday and Sunday. Many of these players taking the field will certainly be playing for number three. Our team joining me now, sports betting expert Dave Weaver, Super Bowl champion James Jones here with us in studio. As always, sports talk radio host Andrew Filippone joining us from Pittsburgh and the face of Marquee Sports Network, Cole Wright in Chicago. We've got a full team here, guys. There are games on Saturday and Sunday this week. We're going to do what we do, and we're going to start by focusing on some playoff win and in scenarios. Week 18 is here. Let's get you ready. And we're getting right to the Titans and Jaguars game flexed into Saturday night. Kick it off from Jacksonville. This one, 8-15 Eastern time. The winner of this matchup wins the NFC South and gets a playoff spot. The loser is going home. These teams are headed in opposite directions. The Jags have won four in a row. Titans have lost six in a row. Guys, Josh Dobbs starting under center for Tennessee. The Titans are six-point underdogs. I want to get all your picks here. And, Pony, I'm going to start with you. What you got? Well, this is a classic. If you have two quarterbacks, you really don't have one situation for the Titans. Mike Vrabel is going to start Josh Dobbs, like you said, Lisa. A guy who was not with this team three weeks ago made his first career NFL start. Not bad against Dallas, but not good enough in a situation like this. And Vrabel has made it sound like Malik Willis will see action, too, against one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Trevor Lawrence playing so well. And the other thing, what that Jacksonville defense has done against teams that have had quarterback issues, held the Jets to three points, held the T Texans to three points. I anticipate they covered this six-point spread and with ease. I don't see Tennessee scoring more than 10 points in this game. I'm taking Jacksonville to win the AFC South. Yeah, one of the remarkable things about these two teams when they play, it's never close. Seven out of the last eight times they've played has been at least a 13-point margin, and I think Jacksonville is going to cover the spread as well. Remember, go back to week number 14. They were 4-8, and eight, and they played Tennessee, and they were down 14-7, and then they scored 29 straight points, and then they've won four games since then. I think that was really the turning point when they played the Titans early this year, and they've got a lot of momentum. Not only have they won those four straight games but they have covered in each of those four games so I just think Trevor Lawrence who's by the way in three games against the Titans got in the end zone on the ground twice maybe keep an eye on him for an anytime touchdown score but yeah I think Jacksonville is going to be too tough here all right James you heard their picks mm -hmm. what do you think I mean I'm with him unless Derrick Henry plays out of his mind and I'm talking about 300 yards on the ground you are not going to win this game if you're the Tennessee Titans they just cannot score points they cannot move the ball on the offensive side of the football and Pony said it best if you have two quarterbacks you don't got one you cannot move the football they cannot throw it consistently so if King Henry does not come down and run this football down the Jacksonville Jaguars throat they are not going to have a chance to win this game and the Jags defense is big time they play big time football they're able to get out after the passer, they stopped the run. But not only that, this Jags team, as we all know, watching them is playing with confidence. They are riding high. They feel like it is their time to get in the playoffs and make some noise. This is going to be a beatdown for Doom. Oh, I knew it. I saw <laughs> that coming you. Away. <laughs> Giving six points, you see the line right there. Remember, this game was flexed into Saturday night, meaning the Jags are playing on a short week, while the Titans are well rested, having last played on Thursday night of week 17. Are you 17. picking them, Lisa? So three Is that what you're saying? Days you rest. calling for the upset, Lisa? Is I that am what not. I, hear there? I am not. But that's a that's a big day. three extra days rest yeah. on week 18 of the season. At this point in the season, that is, that is huge. Uh, something to consider.
<laughs> All right, now to another win in your end game. We got the eight and eight Patriots clinch a wild card spot and the seven seed with a win in Buffalo. The Bills will be taking the field with a heavy heart. Still a lot to play for as well. They're in the mix for that number one overall seed in the AFC. These two teams faced off in week 13 with the Bills winning 24 to 10 the final there. We're going to get all of your picks for this one. And Dave, the Patriots are seven point underdogs in Buffalo. How do you see this one? Playing I love out? Buffalo in this spot. You know, Josh Allen, the first three times that he played against Bill Belichick, he lost. He, he just could not figure him out. Guess what? He's figured him out. He's won five of six. And the last three wins against the Patriots have basically all been blowouts in those three games. He's had 10 touchdowns and zero interceptions. The Bills are going to be obviously. Uh, it's going to be tough for them. Uh, James talked about that a little bit more than I can. But um, if, if they play the, the way that I think they're going to play, Patriots have no chance to, to get into the playoffs and win this game. I think the Bills are going to are going to win pretty easily. Well, at least I'll tell you what, the Bills, they really do have all the chances in the world. And the rallying cry around the Bills and DeMar Hamlin is going to be at an all-time high. And you take a look at Bills Mafia, the best fans, some would say, in all of the National Football League, they're going to find a way to lift this team that currently has that number one ranked defense and the fourth best offense. And they check in as a top 10 team running and passing wise as well. And then you take a look at New England, their ninth ranked defense, hoping for a little payback after that a week 13 beating courtesy of Buffalo that Lisa made mention of. And I think it may be wishful thinking because the Bills right now, uh, they're a locomotive on a collision course with destiny. I'm picking the Bills all day in this one, 38 to 24, I think they make it happen. Yeah, James, I, I do want to talk to you as specifically yeah. about as a, as a former player and mm -hmm. being in that perspective because these Bills are home. Mm -hmm. They're working through so much. Yeah. We know DeMar's dad addressed the team, mm -hmm. um, and that was positive. A lot of guys needed yeah. to hear from him and from the family um, directly. But how do these guys now put their mind to football and the job they have ahead of them against the Patriots? Yeah, it, I mean, it's going to be tough, Lisa. And when you really look at this situation, I mean, that's their brother, you know. And at the end of the day, you know, it's the reason why they let DeMar's family come in there and talk because it is a family and that's their brother. I've seen my brothers get hurt on the football field, neck injuries and not get up and have to go to the hospital. And you, you really, you know, during that game, you don't want to take the field again. But as you get back to the locker room and as, as it all unfolds, the only thing you want to do is go out there and honor him, play for him, go out there and play hard. I'm assuming that is going to be threes everywhere on jerseys. It's going to be heavy hearts. They're going to go out there and battle for him because not only that, they know what winning, they know what this team means to DeMar, and they're going to go out there and battle for him. So I'm looking forward to seeing them go out there and play. I know they're going to have a heavy heart. I know it's hard. But I truly believe they rally for them. They go out there, play hard, and they get a W. And they all have been fighting for that number one seed all season long collectively. We've got the Patriots and Bills from Buffalo. Again, that line seven kickoff Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. All right, now let's get to our final win and in scenario this weekend. This time it's the Packers who host Detroit on Sunday night football. Did not think we'd see this, mm -hmm. but we are here. Here we are. A lot of people thought Green Bay was done when they were four and eight, but a four game win streak has helped put them in this position. Detroit isn't out of it either. A win in this and uh, a Seattle loss means the Lions are in the postseason. Packers four and a half point home favorites. Cole, I'm going to come to you first. Which side okay. do you like here? Well, Lisa, first things first, I'd like to uh, send a heartfelt apology to our guy, James, because last <laughs> week I did go out there and pick the Green Bay Packers, but I didn't pick them like that mm -hmm. over the Minnesota Vikings. So uh, I like to send well wishes to Packer Nation because uh, they took full advantage of that 31st ranked defense. Yeah. The Lions, however, uh, they're not better at all. Their defense right now, uh, ranked 32nd in the league. Uh, not something that Aaron Glenn wants to hang his hat on, but you take a look at the Lions needing this win versus Green Bay and a Seattle loss to the Rams. Well, the Pack, they're currently in control of their own destiny. Like you said, Lisa, winning they're in, and they've won four straight in five of their last seven. And I think they're going to make it six out of their last eight and rattle off five in a row. Green Bay, 27 to 20. Sorry, Minnesota, and all of your 10,000 lakes. <laughs> Lions uh, could easily be playing for just pride in this game. By the time it kicks off, the Rams I see what you play the Seahawks. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a situation where I, I think that the Packers are going to do it. I don't think that the line scares me whatsoever. 
look at what they're doing now with their running backs in Green Bay with Dylan and Jones and think about what happened to Detroit in Carolina when they allowed for Chuba Hubbard and Foreman to both go over 100 yards. They're not the same offense away from Ford Field. They go from 33 points at home, which is the best in the league, down to 19 on the road. So Green Bay's defense has stiffened the last few weeks. We're going to make it a clean sweep here. I expect James to have a cheese head on by the time we go back to him in studio because he's been drinking the Packers rallying to make the playoffs Kool-Aid for a long time. I mean, we walked into the studio before the show today, and James, you said to me, man, they're going to mess around, and my Packers are going to get in. Here we go. my Packers in there, and they are going to be trouble letting AR-12 and my Packers in the playoff. Listen, number one, Lisa, Dave, Aaron Rodgers does not lose in December at Lambeau Field. He just don't lose there, right? The defense for the Green Bay Packers is playing at a high level. They are one of the main reasons why they are on a four-game winning streak. They are playing defense. They are getting takeaways. They are playing with the mojo. It is Sunday night football at Lambeau Field in December. Must-win game. AR-12 shows up. And this is going to be just like it was last week, Cole. A beat down. They are about to beat so. Detroit down and go into the playoffs, ride high, and whoever they draw is in trouble. This is exactly what Aaron Rodgers <laughs> wanted, to have everybody yep. talking smack early and have him be like, just wait, just wait. All right, guys, thanks. Thanks a lot for all of you guys and your takes there as interesting ones on some of those matchups. But, of course, you can bet those games on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. And a reminder, you can get up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Yes, you can do it right now. New users, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, sign up for your new account using that promo code right there on your screen it's more ways 1000 after you sign up just place your first bet with us it's that easy if you don't win you'll automatically get your stake back in free bets so download the app sign up using that promo code more ways 1000 and play with us today and you know how we roll plenty more still to come here on more ways to win including our expert picks on the top teams playing for the top seed in each conference plus dave has cooked up another big payday parlay see which a teams he has on his ticket to hit it big this week more ways to win coming right back rolling on here on more ways to win and in every matchup there's an underdog and a favorite but how do you know which one to bet. Well, you can either dig through all the stats and the matchup data, or hey, just tail some really smart experts who are here to tell you where the best value is on the board. You're welcome, America. Your homework is done for you. So let's get right to it and fire up this week's dog and pony show. Hey, guys, Pony, of course, playing the part of Pony. And our special guest, Chad Millman, will be bringing the dogs. Always great have ch having Chad with us, Chief Content Officer of the Action Network. All right, you guys. Let's dig in here on week 18, and Pony, you're up. Give us your first favorite favorite for this week. Who, who do you like? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off the board. This game has zero playoff implications. Give me the Saints in New Orleans against the Panthers. Carolina, obviously, is probably distraught over what happened in Tampa Bay. So from a morale standpoint, not very good going into this game. And what the Saints have done defensively, one of the more under-the-radar stories in the NFL because they've been left for dead for months. Seven straight games holding teams to 20 points or less, and we saw some of that on full display against Philadelphia last week when they went on the road and won the game outright. So this is a very small number. I think New Orleans is a team playing much better football and feeling better about themselves going into this Week 18 matchup. All right, Chad, how about you? Give me an underdog that you like here in Week 18. All right, Lisa, we've had one theme all season long on this show, and that is hold your nose, make the ugliest bet you can possibly make. I don't know if it gets any uglier than betting on the Rams as underdogs against the Seattle Seahawks in Week 18 with Baker Mayfield starting for the Rams. This is a team that just lost by three touchdowns, but I will tell you, in a scenario like this, teams since 2016 – Coming off of a bad loss, which is essentially 17 points or more, they cover at a 62% clip the following week. I'll take it one step further. The past 32 years, a sample set of more than 150 games, teams that have been eliminated, 
playing against teams that have a chance to get to the playoffs, they cover at a 61% clip. And then if you look at this on the field, you're just you're just looking at overreaction on both sides of the of the betting lines. You've got the Seahawks who just had a big win against the Jets that were a team a lot of people were backing, a lot of the public loved the Jets in that spot. Seahawks win big. The Rams looked as bad as they could possibly look. So now you've got an overreaction for the Seahawks. This line is inflated. Take the Rams. All right. Hold your nose on that one. Uh, Pony, give me your second favorite favorite here. This is a game where you've got two teams who I don't think want to win, Texans and Colts. If Houston loses this game, it clinches the number one pick in the draft, which is far more meaningful than winning this game and carrying the momentum of it into next season. So they want to lose. And then if you look at the Colts, they've gotten blasted. They've gotten blown out in some of these games with Jeff Saturday. But pull up their schedule and go game by game. Their last six games are against teams that were 500 or better. Since they beat the Raiders, they've played nothing but good teams. This is at home against the worst team in the NFL. The line's only two and a half. I expect the Colts to win by more than a field goal. Okay, Chad, you're up. Another underdog you like this week. Yeah, so I know Pony and the rest of the crew like the Jags on Saturday night against the Titans, but I'll tell you the wise guys Ooh. have come in on the Titans. This line opened at six and a half. It's been bet down to six. A lot of this is perception, right? The the Titans, the last time they played, they did not play well against the Cowboys. They had Josh Dobbs playing quarterback. But the truth is you could make the same claims for the Jags being uh, overinflated. They beat the Cowboys on a pick six. They beat the Jets with Zach Wilson. So now we're talking about a game that a lot of the wise guys have power rated to closer to four and a half. And I will tell you that Mike Vrabel as a dog in this spot of more than a field goal, 21 and nine in his career covering at a 70% clip. And don't forget, Vrabel has basically been planning for this game for two weeks. He rested 10 of his starters last week. They are all coming back. They're gonna be as healthy as they've been all season long. Josh Dobbs, who didn't play terribly against the Cowboys, is gonna have an opportunity now, two weeks of practice, two weeks of, of first team reps. So take the Titans at plus six. That's a great point right there. Uh, all right, Pony, let's uh, recap your two favorite favorites here for this week. You like the Saints giving the points to the Panthers and you like the Colts giving the points to the Texans. Flip the board here, Chad. Here's a look at your dogs. You're taking the Rams. Getting points in Seattle, a tough place to play. And the Titan is getting points in Jacksonville. Uh, awesome stuff by you guys. You can bet these dogs and favorites right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And you can get more of Chad's insight by listening to the Favorites podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Also, make sure to download the Action Network app for expert picks, live scores, and stats, as well as analysis. Thank you, guys. All right, now it is time to turn a little bit into a lot. Dave's big pay payday parlay is here, and this is where you just bet a few dollars to win thousands of dollars. Dave is ready. It's week 18, final week of the regular season. You've got an eight-legger ready to hit. Who do you like this week? It's one of my favorite things on social media is to see somebody that said, oh, I bet five bucks and I won 60000 Or yes, did he cash sir. out or mm. did he not cash out? So I'm going to take a little bit of money, $20, and we'll see what we can turn it into. No spreads involved. These are going to be all money line plays, some favorites and some underdogs. We're going to start with Jacksonville with everything on the line. Tennessee's losing six in a row. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to start it off. Big deal. $20 has turned into 27 no Duval, huh? Duval. <laughs> how, about, how about Miami and the Jets? You know, when they win this game, nobody's yeah. going to remember that they lost five in a row and, and had that big collapse before the playoffs. Because if they win, they're in great shape. Yeah. So I, I think Miami will beat the Jets. Yeah, Jets in trouble. How about the meaningless game of the week? That is Carolina and the Saints. I'm, I'm looking at it the other way. Saints beat the Eagles last mm -hmm. week. Now they don't care about Carolina. Yeah. Neither team, if they win, they're making the playoffs anyway. So I'm taking the plus money with Carolina. Now we're up to over yeah, take $139. Like Darnold in that situation. Free square on the bingo card this week is going to be the Eagles. They're going to beat up on the Giants, but you know they're minus 900 favorites. That's going to just they better win that game. make it a few dollars higher. Uh, the Chargers, it's an interesting game because they, they could still get the five seed. What uh -huh. happens a little earlier today might change how hard they play, but right. I think clearly they're the better team than the Broncos. So the next one, and these, these are my two spoiler alerts. So the, 
Cowboys are playing Washington. Let's Washington would love now. nothing Let's more money now. than to beat Dallas. And mm. if Dallas is scoreboard watching and they see that the Eagles are up big yep. on the Giants, they might pull their starters Take and Washington them gets Don't hurt nobody. Done. This is the one you need to turn away for. Mm -hmm. The Lions are going into Lambeau and beating the Packers at plus 188. So much pressure on Green Bay. They've come this far, and then they're going to lose to Jared Goff. As wow. As much as I want people to win their money, he made this pick. Right? You can take it out, and you can play a seven-legger and leave that one out if you want. Oh, by the way, there's a second second free score in the bingo card, the Niners against the Cardinals. So there we go. Now that's a smart $20 pick. You get your money on that one. Over 2600 bucks. Mm. I tell you what, Dave, JJ's got a lot of weight on you, a lot of muscle, and you're going to do that <laughs> standing know. five feet right. away. Yeah, 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 within arm's reach. <laughs> All the only reason why uh -huh. I didn't go, I seen security over there. They <laughs> gave me. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, you got me, right? You got me. I'm going to do this. Uh, I, I love it. Take no. some risks, right? Uh, great stuff by Dave. Look at those odds just skyrocket. That's what these parlays do. Tail Dave or create your own parlay to win big on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You can do it right now. Make sure you use that promo code MOREWAYS1000 if you are brand new to betting with us. And, of course, you can also get in on the fun with Daily Fantasy. One-stop shop right there on your phone. FanDuel has a bunch of DFS contests live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com and of course on the app as well. But how do you give yourself an edge? Got to find the best value at each position. So we bring in a ringer each and every week. Jim Sonis is a senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's done the research for you. Jim, who are your best value plays here for week 18? Thanks, Lisa. Motivation is key in week number 18. I think with these three value plays, we've got guys who should play full snaps on Sunday. That begins a tight end with Pat Fryermuth coming in at $5,500. Fryermuth Steelers need a win in this game to make the postseason, and Fryermuth has had a good role of late. He has a 23% target share in games post buy that he's played with Kenny Pickett. So Fryermuth has a good role, hasn't shown upside as of yet, but I do think that is within his range of outcomes. A wide receiver, DJ Chark, stands out once again, despite the fact the Lions could be eliminated before this game if the Seahawks win earlier on. I still expect the Lions to play their starters for this entire game, try to play spoiler to Green Bay. Shark has a lot of yard issues, could see Jair Alexander on the outside for some of the snaps, but I still think that Shark is under salary here at $5,700. We'll finish things off with Jeff Wilson at running back for the Dolphins. The Dolphins also in a must-win spot trying to make the postseason. Last week without Tua Tunga Vailoa, the Dolphins did put Wilson out there for quite a bit. He he played his highest snap share in the games he's played to the Dolphins so far this year and had 15 carries and seven targets. Facing off with the Jets, they've been eliminated already, and Skylar Thompson can run a bit, which may open up some holes for Wilson in the ground game. So Jeff Wilson's next 62 with Lisa, I think a good way to get exposure to a backfield in a tight situation, but also with a good amount of usage. Great stuff, as always, Jim. Thank you. Set your lineups at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter. Great follow at Jim Sonis. And check out his Covering the Spread podcast as well, wherever you get your podcasts. And up next, the Eagles, the 49ers, the Chiefs are all fighting for that top seed in their conference. We're breaking down each of their matchups coming up right here. Plus, our experts hand out their best bets of the week, drop and spread, money line total bets. See which teams they have to cash this week. It's week 18. This is FanDuel TV, and we're coming right back. Welcome back to more ways to win. It's week 18. Thank you for hanging with us. Hey, pressure is a privilege and we say bring it time to go head to head in our next debate where we pit our experts against our ex player. Each of our seasoned betting experts will debate a game with James nine year NFL vet Super Bowl champion and we're focusing on the teams fighting for that number one seed. It's go time. Let's start this expert versus ex player battle with the Eagles hosting the Giants guys. It's simple for Philadelphia. Win this one, they win the NFC East. They clinch the top seed in the NFC, which means a first round by home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Okay, the Eagles have lost two in a row without Jalen Hurts under center. He is expected to be back this week. Now, as for the G-Men, they are locked into that six seed. They have virtually nothing to play for here. So the line for this one is a big one. Eagles giving 14. Cole, you're up first. How do you feel about this line? Well, uh, I feel the same way Chad feels about a lot of different games. Sometimes you just have to hold your nose and uh, just deal with that stinky situation. And last week's Philly loss to the New Orleans Saints, well, uh, that stunk every single turn of the corner. 20 or more points in every single game, uh, but one until 
last week in that uh, 10 point laugh on Sunday, a season low uh, for Philly and the Eagles. But uh, Jalen Hurts, he was on the sideline playing the role of understudy. And this week, his health is going to be a key indicator. If he can't go, Gardner Menchu, of course, uh, looking to lead Philly to the promised land, give them a lift. And if he's looking to improve on his 18 of 32 for 274 yards, that would give the Eagles the playoff boost that they needed. And it might get Chris Sims out of that Jalen Hurts doghouse. Uh, you might want to go Google that right there. Eagles win, but they won't cover 24 to 17, uh, 14 points. And that's a lot, James. You know what? I'm not making my pick until I know who's going out there. So I don't know how long this show going to last, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. If Gardner Minshew is going out there, I am taking the G-man. All right. But if Jalen Hurts is going out there, which as expected, I am taking the Eagles in this one. Listen, Jalen Hurts is the MVP of the National Football League. And I know Lisa's ooh, looking at ooh. me like, ah, what you talking about? Patty Mahomes got 5,000 yards passing. But just look at the Eagles. Just look at the locker room falling apart. Look at the team falling apart on the football field since Jalen Hurts' injury. They have not won a game. They have looked absolutely terrible on the offensive side of the ball. You cannot beat the New Orleans Saints, who is not playing good football. Jalen Hurts is coming back. They will get this W, but if there's a chance that Garner Minshew takes his view. I'm going to call in and I'm going to switch my pick <laughs> and take the G-Man. No, but I got Jalen Hurts and the Eagles in this one right here. <laughs> I, I, tell you what, I tell you what, you are right. There, there is no Minshew mania going on yeah. right now in Philly. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, now, hey, if the Eagles do lose, this will be their third in the row and that would mean the 49ers can move up to that top seed with a win against the Cardinals. So let's talk about this game. San Francisco has won nine in a row. They just keep doing it. No matter who, what players they throw out there it's the longest active winning streak in the league the Cardinals have lost six in a row Dave this one is for you and this one is also a 14 point spread well let, let's, 14. Just, let's that's a big line uh, let, let's that assume that the Eagles are going to win so now what's at stake you still have the two seed at stake which is still important because if the Eagles do lose two seeds better than the three seed you still got a chance to host a lot of games at home so I think there's still incentive for San Francisco to play well in this game and they have dominated the NFC West you look at if you've been betting on them the last couple of seasons seven and zero against a spread against their division and Arizona really has nothing going for them James what did you say something last week about like a uh, planning trip for Cabo or yeah, something yeah, yeah. the they, Cardinals they, they, they their golf plans. clubs are all polished <laughs> off they got box of Pro V1s packed up ready no to doubt, go because no it is it. golf season right yeah. now for the Cardinals so I, I don't think they're going to put many points on the board but I, it's all about motivation yeah. for San Francisco. I think they, they still want the two seed, mm. but maybe they don't because if they do, uh, are they playing your Packers? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's like, no, Say they do dear. not. I'm no. just saying, do, does the three play the six? <laughs> Huh? The three plays the six, I think. When right? you fold it in right? half, that's what the it The six like. is going to be the Giants. All right. Give me Daniel Jones over AR 12 Aaron Rodgers. So, yes, this is going to be a beat down. 14 points for me is too small. I don't care if the Niners don't play their starters at all. Right? The Arizona Cardinals, like Dave said, their golf clubs are shined up. I want to say, I've seen a couple of them out there on the golf course already. All right, out there in Arizona. So, this is going to be a beat down. But. If I'm Coach Kyle Shanahan, right, I'm not saying I'm not thinking about this because I don't want to see Aaron Rodgers coming here against a Brock Purdy, even though the Niners are very, very hot right now. I'd rather be seeing a Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. So this right here is, hey, what we want to do, kind of, you know, do we want to put our starters out here and try to win this thing and go get this too? Or do we want to just sit on back, man, and hopefully get this three seed and see the New York football giants. I don't know. But in this game right here, this is going to be a beatdown by the San Francisco 49ers. These are all these mind games we play in week 18. (laughs) All right, let's get to my Chiefs, who are still in the mix for the number one seed in the AFC. Mm. And, James, I know you're going to be at Mm. this game. Kansas City is in Vegas taking on the Raiders, who are officially eliminated from the Mm. playoff race. Chiefs have won 9 of 10. They have the league's number one total offense, passing offense, scoring offense. They are playing good football at the right time. Pony, it's an early game on Saturday. Chiefs are giving nine and a half on the road, and this line has moved as well. And I think it's because it's possible. We don't know yet, but depending on what the league does with the Bills-Bengals game, it could just be Kansas City wins and gets the number one seed. 
Uh, and that would leave the games on Sunday less relevant. They wouldn't have a chance. The Bills couldn't get to 14 and three, playing only a 16 game schedule. So a ton on the line to have the playoffs go through Arrowhead, which they've done throughout the Mahomes era. And how about James going against Mahomes? 40 touchdowns, James, over 5,000 yards. He will lay a smackdown on one of your former teams Saturday against Jarrett Stidham and the Raiders. He wants that MVP. You take Tyree Kill away from him, and he's putting up these prodigious numbers. I will take a quarterback, James, for MVP, who played 17 games and put his body on the line for two more games than Jalen Hurts. Lisa Mahomes is the MVP, and he's going to cover here on Saturday and prove James wrong. First off, you can't take a shot at Jalen Hurts right like that, man. My man is hurt, all right? That's why he couldn't take the football field. But Availability is your best ability, something James. Deep you've, had down in my heart. You that. you've had Coach McCarthy tell you yeah, that. Yeah, but if you get hurt, somebody falls on you the right way. I'm, I understand that. But if you're hurt and you can't go at all, you can't go. You know what I'm saying? But something deep down in my heart tells me, Raiders. <laughs> oh, God. But not this year, next year. Um, <laughs> this year in this game right here, I am taking Patty Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs. We all know Patty Mahomes is a bad man. 5,000 yards passing again. I know we're not going to take the MVP away from him, but I brought it up because what Jalen Hurts means to that Eagles team, not just on the field, but in the locker room too, that's MVP type category type stuff. But Patty Mahomes in this one, I'm not going to say big because I believe my Las Vegas Raiders are going to put up a fight in this one division game but I say Patty Mahomes in this one go into the playoffs on a high note thank you for finally <laughs> just getting rid of all the nonsense with this MVP race thank you for uh for coming to your senses there JJ all right let's get to our best bets of the week our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread money line and total bet here we've done it every year of this show guys I love it it is part of our weekly competition where each of the guys get 100 virtual dollars for three bets and I gotta say I got I gotta be honest you guys had a rough week in 17 yeah, sometimes it happens I mean you went two and one but you lost money I lost I lost <laughs> the big bet and I lost it on a team that stinks the Colts um what do you guys have that was a bad pick I mean it's Ugh. a bad pick but you know what we learn and we move on and here we are we're resilient Dave we can't sweep every single week pony but we'll, we can try to do that here in week number 18 I'm going to start I'm not going to change even though you said I kind of indexed my my dollars wrong and had the most on the, my uh spread bet I'm going to keep it the same way that I pretty much done it all year $55 on my best play of the week which is the Jacksonville Jaguars the, the last eight times that they have played the Titans, the winning margin, whoever's won the game, has been 13 points or more. These are usually not one-score games, and they're clearly the better team right now, having won four in a row, and uh, Tennessee's lost six straight. So I think that 13, 14-point margin goes in the favor of Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence can have another big game. As far as my upset alert here or my uh, money line bet, and a meaningless game, I think the Saints lose to the Carolina Panthers, $20 on that. And $25, think we're going to see some fireworks in Vegas between the Raiders and the Chiefs over to 52 and a half. I'm going to spread things around evenly here, which is the opposite of Dave. Maybe that's my New Year's resolution, <laughs> try to go away from his formula. <laughs> but as I say that, I am copying him on the Commanders against the Cowboys. Dallas is not going to be able to get that first round by because of what we just went over with San Francisco. The best they can do is hope for an Eagles upset loss and a win, and that still puts them into a two seed. I don't think they're going to sell out to win this game. Not at all. I don't think they're going to try very hard whatsoever. I think they're going to treat this like a de facto buy. You get seven points with the commanders. Love them in this game. $34 on that. 33 bucks on Denver to upset the Chargers lock this bet in now because there's a good chance LA with their progressive coach Staley that they punt on this game because they've got nothing to play for and Russell Wilson is coming off a good game now that Nathaniel Hackett was fired against Kansas City last week and my final bet $33 the under in Bucks and Falcons Desmond Ritter versus Kyle Trask maybe Blaine Gabber it's not going to be Brady and the usual sus suspects no points are getting scored in this game. Definitely bet the under. 
Yeah, all those strategies. Uh, Cosign, great stuff, you guys. Uh, we'll see which ones are the best after this weekend, and we'll air the results on next week's show. We do it every single week. Head up the Fatal Sportsbook now to place your bets before kickoffs. And remember, we have games kicking off on Saturday to get this week going. Coming up, it's Moneymaker, Moneyline Moneymaker time, money making all the time. Uh, James and Cole <laughs> give out their underdog upset specials. See who they are riding with this week. We're coming right back. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. We've been sitting here on the commercial break talking about all of the scenarios and who could play who and who wants to play who, who you don't want to play. Uh -huh. well, we're going to focus on right now on some teams that are in the playoff hunt but definitely need some help. We're going to do it rapid fire style. Guys, you know the drill. I give you the line. You give me your pick. 15 seconds or less. Dave, we're starting with the Seahawks. They're in the playoffs with a win against the Rams and a Packers loss. Seattle hosting this division matchup and giving six and a half at home. You know, I've not really been that much on the Seahawks uh, going deep into the season, but this is a spot that I can definitely back them. Is Baker Mayfield still playing for the Rams? I don't know. I, 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 would, I would assume he is, and uh, that's always a bet against, right? <laughs> All right, Cole, this one's for you. Dolphins get in with a win against the Jets and a Patriots loss. A huge game for Miami, who's without Tua Tagovailoa. Now Teddy Bridgewater's dealing with that dislocated yeah. pinky. pinky. Uh, do we see Skylar Thompson or veteran Mike Glennon, who has just signed oh. to the practice Ooh. squad? Mm -hmm. QB a question mark as the Dolphins sit as one-point home dogs. Well, when it comes to Mike Glennon, maybe the Dolphins are going to look to stick their neck out this week. But either way, Skylar Thompson <laughs> will be the starting quarterback. So, like James said earlier in the show, if you have two quarterbacks, you really uh, don't have one. But either way, I think that uh, the matchup is going to necessitate a W here. Oh, Miami, oh. they get the win 24 17. They don't do Mike Glennon's neck like that. <laughs> All right, hey, Pony. Maybe you can get him a turtleneck, James. A long one. <laughs> Pony. You need an arm sleeve for that. If the Dolphins and Jets lose, could happen. That leaves the door open for your Steelers to get in with a win. Pittsburgh is a two and a half point home favorite against the Browns. Yeah, testament to Kenny Pickett's growth that they're even in this spot with his fourth quarter dramatics. But this line scares the heck out of me. Why is it only two and a half? The Browns are dead. They're, they've got nothing to play for. They're on the road. They always lose to the Steelers. Deshaun Watson coming off of three touchdowns. Nick Chubb ran all over them the last time. I'm nervous. As, at least I'm very tempted. I'm going to take the Browns. This line's telling me to bet Cleveland here. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I am. I, I like the Browns in this spot. That line is tricky. I, I'm with you. Um, all right, guys, let's move on here on more ways to win. From quick picks to upset alerts, we are back on the money line. We are dropping those money line moneymakers for you right now. And we're giving them the bet moji treatment. JJ gave you a little tease there. Uh, Cole, the guys will react to your upset pick with the appropriate emoji. And Cole, you, you're up first. Give me your upset pick here for week 18. Well, Pony just took the Browns over his Steelers, so I can't be much worse than that. And uh, when it comes to Tom Brady and company, not the usual personnel that we're used to seeing for Tampa, but the, the silver lining here is that the Bucks they're allowing fewer points of per game than Atlanta. They're also allowing fewer total yards. Plus, Todd Bowles and company, what have they done? They've gone out there in their last five games, and they've played to a 600 win percentage. They've won three out of their last five. And after all, it is playoff season, so postseason, Tom, activated. Bucks win 24-20. Get that upset in. Postseason Tom probably not going to play, Cole. Stop, stop, stop. It's like the most unbettable it, it, game it's of the right. week. It, it, well, it, it, it's going to filter through the locker room. That's you what's going to happen. I, 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 I'm really mad at our producers for even giving you time <laughs> 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 to pick that upset, taking Tom Brady. I don't even know how the Falcons are favored, but they might know that Tom and them Because the, the Bucks are sitting are, everybody, are, James. Are, are, That's I mean, why. Exactly. Nobody's playing, but hey. Cole's still excited about this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, when, the when the Bucks squad. win this, dinner on James <laughs> at the Super Bowl. Dinner on James. Hey, hey I'll, t I'll take that. I'll take that. Dinner on me. Because right? I'm basically Ooh. saying I'll, I'll pay for it anyway. Because right. they're going to win <laughs> in this game anyway. But I am going. You. All right, my upset pick. I am going. Pony really just took it from me. And I am going with Deshaun Watson. Mari Cooper, balling, right? You seen what they just did to the commanders, right? Hey, he's starting to get his legs under him. He's starting to look like.
the old Deshaun Watson making plays, big time plays. I don't see how the Steelers slow him down, stop him. I think him and Amari Cooper and this offense have a really good day. I think this defense gets after Kenny Pickett. They are going. Oh, this hurts me to say it. They are going to give Coach Tomlin his first losing season of his career. And I'm a believer in Coach T. But this is the season that it happens. Deshaun Watson ruins it for him, gives him that first losing season. Three weeks ago, it looked like they were having a losing yeah. season. For them to come this far, mm -hmm. to get back to 8-8, eight and, eight, and mm -hmm. still not have a chance to give him a winning record, mm. they're not losing. Okay. Hey, you bet on the playoffs, Dave? They go it all the way, they make it? it? They no, they, too many things have to happen for that, but uh, I don't think they make the playoffs, but I think they win the game. Mm. Yeah, hey. Look, not hostages. Like Tony said, a testament to Kenny Pickett yeah. and what football he has ahead of us will be very exciting to watch. Oh, yeah. um, awesome stuff. If you agree with Cole, <laughs> yeah. Maybe check yourself before you wreck okay. yourself. Right. Uh, hop on the FanDuel Sportsbook app and tail our guys, or hey, you do you. You know we're all about that. Get that plus money before kickoffs um. this weekend. Thanks for hanging with us. We're going to continue on here on FanDuel TV from Game Picks to Daily Fantasy. You can cash in on DFS as well. So we're bringing you some ringers well worth their high price tag. Jim Sonis is back with the goods. Jim, who is on your can't-miss list here in Week 18? Thanks, Lisa. As always, with the final week of the regular season, we got to consider motivation in a big way. And we do get that at running back via Kenneth Walker III. The Seattle Seahawks need a win in week number 18 to stay alive for the postseason. And Walker has been carrying the load recently. 26 and 23 carries his past two games. And he's on 100 total yards in both those games. Facing off with the Rams here, likely no Aaron Donald once again. So Kenneth Walker III, a prime target at $7,700. A wide receiver. I love Jamar Chase. $8,500 facing off with the Ravens. The Bengals can still get the two seed in the AFC, and there's a lot of value in that with the way things break out in that conference. Chase, in the past five games with T. Higgins, is at 10.6 targets per game, 2.4 deep targets per game, and two red zone targets per game in that time. I think it's a good time to go to Jamar Chase, well worth the $8,500 salary this week. Finally, I love Christian McCaffrey at $10,000. The 49ers not only can get the, the one seed in the NFC, but also need to stave off the Vikings, who are currently in the three seed. So a lot of motivation here for the 49ers to win this game. We see McCaffrey carrying a massive load of late. He's got a 53.8% red zone share in the full games he's played without Eli Mitchell and has 139.5 total yards per game in that time as well. So McCaffrey, a lot on the line here once again for the 49ers, assuming the Eagles don't pull away immediately from the Giants in their game. So for $10,000, Christian McCaffrey gets you a lot of work, gets you a lot of upside, and well worth that lofty salary, Lisa, once again. Yes, Jim, my man. Set your lineups at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Sonis. And another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up, some teams are still jockeying for playoff position, like the Bengals, the Vikings, the Cowboys. Actually, a lot more than some, guys. Uh, we're picking all of those games coming up next right here. All right, so we broke down some win and in scenarios. We focused on the race for the top seed. Now we're taking a look at some teams jockeying for playoff positioning here. Guys, give me your quick picks for these games. We've got two top teams, uh, the top two teams in the AFC North facing off of the division still up for grabs here. Pony, we got the Bengals, seven-point home favorites against the Ravens. What you got? Five straight Ravens games have gone under. They've been very low scoring, good defensively, bad offensively with Tyler Huntley, but under means close games, low scoring, take the Ravens and a touchdown. Okay. Cole, let's get to you on the Vikings. They could finish Ooh. in the top two or three spot. They're in Chicago where Bears quarterback Nathan Peterman getting the start in place Ooh. of injured Justin Fields. So uh, Minnesota, now a seven and a half point favorite, Cole. Yeah, of course, Justin Fields dealing with that banged up hip. Uh, but uh, Cole Komet, he will be the saving grace in this ball game for the Chicago Bears as they try to zero in on that number one overall pick. Komet, top five in tight end touchdowns. However, it won't be enough. The Vikings win a non vike like game. It's going to be a two-score victory, 31-21, Minnesota. 
Dave, we've talked a lot about this Dallas team. Could still end up as the one seed, the two seed, the five seed. Cowboys at Washington, who's starting at Sam Howell under center. Mm -hmm. Dallas giving seven on the road. Uh, I'll take the seven points. I don't think Washington can win this game. They really have that to play for to try to beat that divisional rival and have Dallas not get that one or two seed. I think when Dallas looks up and sees that Philly is cruising to an easy win, maybe they're scoreboard hunting just a little bit. They can maybe bend some of their starters in the second half. We'll see. Either way, I think Washington's going to play very hard in this game and cover. And again, a reminder, these games are kicking off on Saturday. We've got Saturday and Sunday NFL football this week. You can make your bets right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And I got to pass along some great news here. America's number one sportsbook just got even better. Now you can bet on horse racing directly in the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Not only can you place bets on live horse racing, but you can also watch horse races live right from the app. And there's a new horse race starting just about every five minutes. So check out the FanDuel Sportsbook app for nonstop racing, free picks, easy tutorials to help you learn about horse racing. So have fun taking in the races and betting the ponies directly in the FanDuel Sportsbook app and learn more at FanDuel.com slash horse racing. It is week 18 and that will do it for us. And as we kick off this final week of the regular season and we've talked about all show all show long, it's on our hearts. Mm -hmm. It's in the forefront of everything right now. We are lifting up Damar Hamlin in prayer. We are sending strength. We're sending love to Damar and his family for continued healing and more good news. We've got a special community here and across sports. Take care of each other, support one another. Enjoy these games. We'll see you right back here next week.